If you are new to the Mac or maybe you've just upgraded to a new Mac then uh, this video is all about setting up the Finder and so I'll be sharing a few little tips and tricks for how to do that effectively. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech, my name's Alec and uh, this week I upgraded my computer after quite some time <laughs> and I upgraded to one of the new uh, M1 Mac Minis. Well, they're not new at this point, are they? Let's face it. It's a 2020 M1 Mac Mini, <laughs> but it's new to me and it's uh, certainly going to help me give a little performance boost. I got tired of waiting for the 16 inch M, uh, M series MacBook Pro, so uh, just thought I'll just get the Mac Mini instead. And as it happens, my other laptop that I had been using up until this point, my mobile laptop that I can take with me on the go everywhere, has not moved from its little stand on my desk for uh, well over 12 months now. So I think I'm safe with a desk-bound Mac Mini for the moment. Uh, so anyway, having gone through the process of uh, up upgrading and installing things, I thought what I'd do is I'd just share with you some of my uh, little tips and tricks when setting up a new machine. Now, ordinarily, I would use Migration Assistant to go from either when I'm upgrading an operating system or when I'm changing a Mac but since I've actually done that for quite a few of uh, the sort of past Mac upgrades that I've had and so I've probably carried over quite a few of the different uh, settings and apps and things like that that I might not really be using that much anymore so I thought it was probably worthwhile to actually do a completely fresh uh, setup of this Mac and then that also means that I can actually walk through some of the steps with all of you lovely people as well. <laughs> and uh, there is actually going to be quite a few videos in this series because uh, there is, at the end of the day, a lot of potential setting up to do depending on what you're going to be doing with your Mac. Uh, now, I actually had a list of all of my sort of essential apps that I need on my uh, my Mac, uh, but there's about 43 of them. <laughs> there's exactly 43 of them that are absolutely essential to everything that I'm doing. Uh, so I'll probably need to break those down into smaller little chunks as well, like my top 10 uh, productivity apps and the, all that sort of stuff. But that is for another video. Today we're just focused on the Finder. And then the next video I'm going to make is going to be all about the system preferences and the little sort of tweaks and adjustments that I make uh, in there. So this is all basically stuff that anybody can do with their Mac uh, without needing any special software or anything like that and they're just little things really to uh, make it look a little bit prettier perhaps and hopefully run a little bit better and a little bit more logically <laughs> at least in my humble opinion uh, so let's start with the finder and the first view that most people get of the finder is actually the desktop because that is actually just the finder it's part of the finder so let's start with that first of all and I'm going to show you something now which will shock you yes I know look at that icons scattered over the desktop. It's terrible, isn't it? I don't know quite why that uh, Apple made the default view of the desktop uh, where it had no snapping to a particular grid and people can just throw things on and make a mess like there. I can't believe that that is the uh, preferred method of organization. <laughs> Not that you should be organizing files on your desktop in any case, uh, but that's another <laughs> story for another video. But anyway, I've just thrown some things randomly on the desktop and uh, wherever they landed is where they've stayed on the desktop. So I want to talk you through a few little steps that you can take to maybe clean this up to begin with. Uh, and then we'll go and actually look into the finder itself and the sort of file manager. And uh, I'll show you a few little things that I do in there to make things a little bit more manageable. Again, this is sort of tailored to my workflow. So uh, do bear with me and uh, you may want to do things differently. But Hopefully, by going through this process, I'll show you all the different options and you should be able to see uh, you know, how you can achieve what you want to achieve with it, uh, whether it's the same way that I do it or not. <laughs> So let's first of all organize these uh, desktop icons. Uh, so if we right click on the uh, desktop, uh, then you can either create a new folder. If you wanted to create a folder to put all of this mess away in, then you could do that. And there you go. It's just created the folder wherever it happened to land. Uh, it's called it untitled folder. But if you uh, press uh, return on the folder, then you can just rename it. So I'm just going to call it folder because I'll be deleting it shortly anyway. <laughs> but there we have a folder. And as you can see, I can move it around anywhere on the desktop and it will stay where it's put. So I want to add a bit of organization to this. Uh, you can change the desktop background in here if you want directly from the desktop. Uh, I'll be looking at how to do that in the system preferences as well. But here you can just select any file. Uh, now, get info you can use on any uh, file or folder and it will tell you uh, some information surprisingly enough the get info function tells you some information it'll tell you how many files that there are on it and the total file size and then uh, different uh, 
features and things like that of the uh, the file so that is something that you can do on any file or folder in the finder is just right click and uh, go to get info so if you want to find a file size for example like if i want to find the file size of this one i can go to uh, the get info on here and it will tell me uh, some information about it uh, when it was created file size this is actually one of my little overlays that i use for uh, ecamm live uh, and there you go you can tell when it was modified and so on and so forth so that is the get info command. So this is all accessed again by just right clicking on the desktop. So uh, use stacks, I'll come to that one in a minute. So let's have a look first at some of these sorting options because the stacks is actually what I tend to use anyway, and it, uh, but it does all the sorting for you. But as I say, we'll come back to that. So the default, which I can't understand from Apple, sort by is none. There is no uh, sorting whatsoever. You can have it so it snaps to grid. So in my mind, that's the next best thing, where as you can see, as I, as I move these round, they will sort of snap to some sort of grid pattern on the, uh, on the screen. And I'm just dragging these close to these areas. And as you can see, it's sort of pulling those in to a particular pattern. Uh, you can also do a uh, clean up or sorry sort by uh, if I select any of these ones down here so we can either sort the files by name by the type of file that they are the kind of file the date last opened and so on or by size or tags so if I do that it will actually do a much better job of rearranging them you see how now they're all listed down the uh, side and just basically populating this grid starting from the top right going down and then it would just keep filling up this grid from uh, the top right towards the left so that is how to sort them and as I say you can sort by name sort by kind so it's sorted by the different types of file things like that there um, there is some other uh, view options so let me come to that one next uh, so we'll leave this stack one but that thing that I've just done there where we uh, sorted by kind you can also do that by looking in the view options so let me go back to sorting them by name you can see it's rearranged them all that way the next one is you can change the uh, size of the icons so I tend to have things really small on my screen <laughs> a lot of people can't read <laughs> what's on my screen when it's on there because I do have ridiculously small uh, text and things like that on there uh, the next thing you can do is you can change the grid spacing so if you imagine the uh, sort of imaginary grid that we've got on there you can either have it really closely spaced or far apart so you can see that that's changing the grid spacing now to be uh, a really small grid you can also change the size of the text so if you want a bigger text so that you can read it hopefully there you can see that the text is bigger uh, I obviously go for the absolute smallest text <laughs> you can also have the labels for the files and folders so at the moment you can see that the label for the uh, uh, particular file is underneath you can also change that to be at the right so that's the way I have it <laughs> but you can have it underneath uh, and then you can also show item info so that will show you for example there you can see that it's shown us some uh, file information uh, this one has shown us for a folder whether there are any items in it that's no items in that one so that is what that uh, show item info is uh, or in that case it's shown as the size of the uh, the image file uh, next is we've got show icon preview so as you can see this is a file which is my little uh, overlay and you can see what the image actually is in it so if you've got larger thumbnails then you can uh, you can have that to be able to see or if you just want the uh, little sort of PNG you know the file symbol or a movie things like that then you can have that one as well but I personally just think it's always better to be able to get a little preview even if you can't uh, see it perfectly it just gives you a little bit of an idea what it is so I don't actually tend to have the info on because it's just a little bit too much for uh, too much information for me uh, the icon size uh, yeah you can make that bigger or smaller it's up to you uh, but let me just come back to the stacks which is this one up here this is the other sort of view option uh, now this one will basically group all of your icons or your files rather that are on your desktop it will group them all into little stacks based on whatever uh, well there's a few different ways to arrange them but based on the type of uh, file that they are so you can see how I've activated that now and now I've got a little stack which says images I've got one that says PDF documents one that says movies and so if I click on that it will expand to show me 
just the images down here. If I click on this one, it will show me just the PDFs underneath there. And this one will show me the movies. So uh, that is actually the one that I use on my desktop. It keeps the desktop nice and clean. If I'm looking for a particular image or a particular document, uh, then it will be in its little stack. So it just helps to give it, keep it a little bit more organized. I do actually tend to only use the desktop on a sort of one or possibly two day three day basis <laughs> where I'm working on a project and I've just got some files or folders that I'm uh, partic particularly using quite actively at the time. And so I throw them onto the desktop, much like, believe it or not, an actual desktop. <laughs> I have it as a temporary space where I'm doing whatever I'm doing and then I clear it all away after. And I use a little application to do all the clearing away called Hazel, but I'll uh, do a whole other video about Hazel and how to set that up. Uh, and then I'll leave a link here when I actually get around to doing it. So that is uh, basically the stacks, but I should point out that in the, uh, if you right click again and use stacks, you can also change how to group them. So you can change the stacks so that at the moment I've got it grouping by kind of file, which uh, makes sense to me, but you could also have it by group uh, date last opened or date added, date modified. So if you were keeping stuff on your desktop for several days and you wanted sort of the most recent day in a particular stack, then that would be uh, the way that you can do it. And once again, you can get that from here as well. So this is in the uh, get info. Uh, you can see, uh, I'll pick up on, it's not in get info. Uh, yes, it is in show view options. <laughs> uh, show view options. So here you can change the way these stacks are organized. So here I could change it by date added, for example. So all of these have been added today because I just literally threw them on there to give you this example. Uh, and so that, uh, that's how those have been sorted. So that is the, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to do two things at once there. I was trying to change it back to type and uh, I completely forgot how to speak. <laughs> so that is the, uh, the sort of desktop and some of the setup things that I do on the, uh, on the desktop. Let me make that spacing a little bit smaller. Uh, there we go, just enough so that I can see what the stacks are. Uh, so then the next thing I want to have a look at is in the actual Finder itself. And here we are in the uh, desktop view within the Finder. And so what I thought I'd do is go through just some little view options, basically, that I tend to change on the Finder, uh, which I find are quite uh, quite helpful. And uh, perhaps some people don't necessarily all always have them on as a default. So uh, let's just have a little look at those. So if we come up to the view uh, menu in the top and click on that, there's a few things down here which I turn on. Well, first of all, in fact, let me step back a bit. I prefer, <laughs> and these, th this is all my personal preference, your mileage may vary or you may, may prefer different ways of looking at things, but I tend to think in quite a sort of uh, logical fa fashion with a folder structure and hierarchy and things like that and think about things in terms of folder trees. Uh, there are a lot of new things built into, I say new, they've been around for a few years now, but uh, <laughs> like things like being able to sort things by tags or looking for recent items, uh, things like that. So I know that there are different ways to manage files and maybe I might be living a little bit in the past, but I do like these uh, folder trees. So from the view options up at the top here, you've got Again, it's a bit like the desktop really, a series of uh, files and folders and things like that. And it's not necessarily easy to find what you want, uh, especially if you've, if you've got multiple different levels of folders and if you've got lots of different types of files and things like that. So you could make it a little bit less better by having a list. I think that's certainly uh, an improvement, uh, but I always do favor this one, which is basically it has a folder structure. So if for example, let's just say I was to move some of these files into this folder, then you would be able to see here are the contents of the folder and you'd be able to go back up to the level and see the uh, sort of base structure of them. So I always prefer this sort of view personally. <laughs> if you're doing things with lots of images and things like that, then uh, there's also the, obviously the gallery view and this can be quite good for uh, just sort of browsing through different images and things like that. If you were looking through uh, different images, uh, then obviously this is a good, uh, a good browser view for that, but this is always my, my default view. So let's come back to some other view options, uh, which you may want to toggle on or off. And I tend to just have these toggled on and then they never get switched off for me personally. <laughs> uh, one of them is the, uh, the path bar, and this is coming back to uh, wanting to know the sort of root directory that everything's in or the directory structure. And what that's done is that has put down this little uh, uh, structure at the bottom, which shows you the exact path that you have taken to get to whatever folder this is in. So this is in my R drive, uh, users folder, my 
my home folder, desktop folder, and then there you go. That is the exact file root of that particular file. So I always find that that is useful just to get my head around exactly where I am in the system and uh, yeah, just easy to uh, sort of ju jump between things or if you want to hop back a couple of folders, then I can always just, for example, get back to the desktop by clicking there and so on. So it is just another little navigation tool and I always just leave that on by default. Uh, it may be something that is useful to you. <laughs> All of these are optional, obviously. <laughs> the next one that I also have on is similarly it appears at the bottom and it is the status bar. So if I click on show status bar, you can see it's put this other thing at the bottom here. And this basically tells me uh, how much uh, how much space is available and how many items there are. So how many items there are in that particular folder. And if I come to this folder, then it will tell me uh, basically some more information about the uh, particular uh, folder that I'm in. So now that I've selected that particular file, you can see that it says one of five selected and then again, the space. So I always just have that as a, another little uh, help <laughs> in terms of understanding where I am in the system, space available, all that sort of stuff. Next one is uh, tab bar. Now you can use tabs in the finder. So if I was wanting to, for example, if I was in this folder, my uh, desktop, and I want to open this folder, I can right click on it and go open in new tab. So now I've basically got the, uh, the desktop and then I've also got that folder. So I can flick between them like that. So that's also good if you're sort of copying things from one to another, you can just drag it across. Uh, I'm sure most people know all of this. I'm just uh, <laughs> covering all of the bases. Uh, but if you've only got one tab open, then that uh, tab bar doesn't appear at the top. Uh, and so, but you can actually just have that so that that is always there. Uh, and again, it just does just it does just tell you what the uh, the root folder or the folder that you're in, although that's displayed there as well. Uh, but it does just mean that when if you want to add another tab, you can click this little button over on the uh, right hand side as well. So I can just click that and it will bring me into whatever your default folder is. So that's actually another good point to mention the uh, default folder. So if you come into the preferences of Finder, so I'll come into here to preferences. And then there are a few different options that you can have a look at in here. So first of all, show these items on the desktop. So at the moment, uh, any internal hard drives are not shown on there. But if you look up here where I've got this external hard drive here, uh, that is showing up. And if I click on hard disks, then you'll see that it's now put the, uh, the main uh, Mac hard disk up there as well. I don't tend to have that showing on there, although I do want any external uh, disks showing up there if they happen to be connected. Uh, CDs. Has anybody connected a CD player <laughs> to their uh, Mac or put one in their CD drive uh, of late? I'm not sure, but it's still there for completeness. So if you'd got an external CD drive that you put a CD in, then that would uh, show up there. Um, there may be some people that we need to explain what CDs are, I suppose. But anyway, uh, so CDs, DVDs and iPods will show up there if ever they're con uh, connected. Uh, I haven't unchecked that. Do I think I'll ever need it? Probably not. Uh, you could also have connected servers on there. Uh, again, although I do connect to some servers sometimes, I don't tend to need to have that accessible by the uh, by the desktop. And uh, I do incidentally click the uh, have the external disks showing. It's rare that I would plug a disk in and actually go up here to access it, but it does just show me sort of visually that it is still actually connected. So I don't go and pull it out without realizing that I haven't actually ejected the disk. And it is also a convenient way to just go up here and you can right click on a uh, disk uh, if the beach ball starts swimming, <laughs> there you go. And you can actually eject it from here. So I can just click on eject and then it will just eject that disk. So that's why I do leave that one as showing on the, uh, on the hard drive as well. So a new tab or finder window will open in as it's set to here, recents, but you could change that to anything else. I still haven't actually gone through on this computer and set up all of my folder structure and uh, things like that, but you can just change that in here or you can just go to a specific uh, file or sorry, a specific folder that you want. So I do have a specific root file uh, folder that I will always have a new finder window open in. So that's where you would uh, change that open folders in tabs instead of new windows. Uh, so yeah, the default always used to be that you'd click on a, uh, double click on a folder in the finder and it would open up a whole new window. Whereas here it just opens it up in a new tab. This is just the default brow uh, setting, by the way, I've not changed anything in here. Uh, so that means that it will just basically open up in a completely new tab. Next is tags. So uh, I've got to confess, 
I, although tags have been around for quite some time, I don't actually use tags a great deal. I tend to use uh, naming conventions <laughs> and have my own uh, weird naming convention for things that helps me uh, find things. So I don't tend to use tags so much, uh, but you can just basically ch choose which ones are shown in the sidebar. So uh, that's up to you. I don't tend to normally have those, but I've just left them in for now for uh, completeness. So the next one is the sidebar, and these are the default things that are going to appear in either your favorites down this side, and you've got iCloud, you've got different locations, or we've just looked at tags. And so you can choose uh, what is going to appear in there. So uh, recent, so recent files, uh, AirDrop applications, desktop documents, and so on. These ones always used to be default, but they aren't any, uh, any longer. But if you wanted, you could uh, toggle those ones on as well. Uh, next is the iCloud, uh, iCloud drive. So that's this one's got its own space there, you can see. And then locations, so uh, a bit like on the desktop, it doesn't bother with the actual uh, Mac, your own computer as a location because you've obviously got that in the uh, the, the file manager itself or in the finder itself. Uh, but then any hard disks and things like that. And you can see that these are all currently ticked, but there's only uh, my uh, MacBook Pro sitting next to this computer. And then there's the uh, network tab. But all of these others, uh, they're, although they're all checked, they only actually appear there if you actually connect something. So that is the sidebar. And then uh, next in the advanced tab, so this is something which I don't know is entirely necessary, but I always do it, show all file name extensions. And this basically just puts on the file name extension. So if I come back to my uh, little desktop view, or desktop folder, you can see how it actually shows me the uh, the type of file that they are. And uh, I, or I'm just so used to that now that I leave that on, but you may prefer not to have that. But I like to be able to see what kind of file it is. <laughs> Show warning before changing an extension. Uh, probably recommend that just so that you don't inadvertently change an extension from uh, one thing to another by accident if you're renaming a file. Uh, Show warning before removing something from iCloud Drive. Uh, I'll probably turn that one off, but uh, that is the. These are just the defaults at the moment. Uh, show warning before emptying the uh, bin. Uh, it used to be called the trash. They've changed it to bin. Not quite sure <laughs> why, uh, but there you go. It's not called the trash anymore. It's called the bin officially. And uh, so this is uh, show a warning before you empty it, which is possibly a good thing in case you accidentally uh, delete things which you didn't mean to delete. <laughs> uh, remove items from the bin after 30 days. So. Um, that's perhaps a good one so that you don't end up with a uh, bin or a trash that's got too uh, too full over however many years if you've never actually emptied it. Uh, but again, that means that uh, you won't ever be able to go and recover those items if you change your mind a little bit later. Uh, next is keep folders on top in window when sorting by name. Now, this is something that I do actually do. So if I've got a series of uh, files and folders in this uh, particular window, I always like it to have the, all of the folders right at the top and then have all of the files sorted by name afterwards. Uh, but it just seems to my mind to make sense to have all of the folders at the, at the very top sorted alphabetically and then all of the files sorted alphabetically afterwards so that you're not sort of rooting around in between folders when you're looking for a file and vice versa. So if you uh, click this one in window when sorting by name, so there you go, it's now put that folder at the top. And if I had multiple folders with multiple different names, the folders would all come first and then the files would come afterwards. And then you can also do the same on the desktop as well. So here we've got some different files. Uh, and in fact, if I just put those other files back over there for a moment, so now we've got some different uh, files and folders. And if I sort these, uh, don't use stacks, just to give you uh, an impression. <laughs> and then uh, don't sort. So now I should, if I uh, come back here, oh, I see what you say. I see what it's doing. It is, it's moved these back there. So I do need to uh, sort it uh, by name. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> so now you can see that we've got files down here and we've got this one folder in the middle. So if I toggle this one on, then it's just going to basically do the same. The folder would be at the top. So uh, that was uh, the basically the settings. And when performing a search, so search this Mac, search the current folder or search the uh, the previous search scope. So if you are doing a search in uh, Mac, this is basically this little icon here, then do you want it to search the current folder or the Mac? I tend to just have this search the Mac because uh, 
I'm rarely searching in. I don't have folders that have got so many things in that I need to uh, search in that way. So I just do leave that as the default. So nearly got this set up the way that I would have it set up. There is uh, one last thing that I would do, which is a couple of different things with uh, the actual bar at the top here. In fact, let me just double check if I've got everything in there. Uh, so there is a couple of other things in here. So show view options. So uh, oh, beg your pardon, that is for the desktop. I'm getting myself all muddled up here. Do work, talk amongst, amongst yourselves. <laughs> I think I've covered everything from there. I was getting confused with something else. There you go, easily done. So uh, you can customize the toolbar in here, or you can also go and customize the uh, toolbar in here instead in this menu, but you can just right click on, and this is the same for any application usually, you just right click in here and customize toolbar. Now I'm all about keyboard shortcuts and I do tend to use them uh, for most things or use the stream deck or whatever, uh, but for some reason uh, I'm often moving around the finder with my mouse and I do find it handy to have the uh, create a new folder uh, uh, icon up in the top to just be able to tap on that to uh, create a new folder. Don't know why, it's just one of those things that I use, but you've also got these other things that you can always add into the uh, the top up here, uh, or you can also add in things like the connect to a network, things like that. You just simply drag and drop them and click done. So that for me is now set up as I would use the folder, but hopefully the finder. <laughs> hopefully in doing that, you've seen a few of the little features that you can uh, use when you're basically setting up your view and your sort of working environment really. As I say, that's it for the finder, but <laughs> there will be a few more videos all about setting up Max. And uh, next one I'll do will be specifically about the system preferences. So uh, just down here, uh, lots of things to go through on here and uh, get things tweaked the way, uh, the way that I like them. But hopefully in doing so, I'll show you how to get things the way that you like them as well. Speaking of liking, if you haven't already, <laughs> don't forget to go and like the uh, video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you've got any other things that I've missed or things that you do differently, then please do leave them in the comments. I always like hearing about these sorts of things and uh, it's as much a learning experience for me if people are doing things differently uh, or pointing out things that I don't know about. I'm, uh, I'm always learning new things every day. So uh, yeah, do leave those comments and it will also help anybody else who is going through the process of setting up their Mac. So when I've added those other videos in, I'm gonna create a whole playlist about setting up a new Mac and I'll leave a link to that over on the right hand side. Uh, until then, check out some of these other videos and I'll catch you all later. Have a great day.